everybody, this is Jess and I'm back to do another tutorial for you um, using my watercolour technique in Photoshop. Um, you have to excuse me, I have a little bit of a cold today, but I wanted to address an issue that came up with my previous tutorial, which was that um, a lot of people were having trouble downloading the blending brush. So um, I looked into it a bit more and I found another way to do it which is just as easy and in my opinion is pretty much the same thing as what I'm already doing. So and it's already on Photoshop CC um, so it's very easy for you to find. So here we go again, we're going to um, take this little fox drawing I've done here and I'm just going to show you how I colour this in uh, using my watercolour technique. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, start uh, a new um, file, go up to file, new, and I've got the width at 8 inches, the height at 8 inches, it can be anything you want, don't do it too small because if you do it too small you won't be able to blow it up, um, you can always reduce the size, you cannot always make a size bigger because you will lose um, the uh, pixels, it will look a bit blurry. Um, I keep my colour mode at CMYK so that I can print from it. You can always um, go from CMYK to RGB. You cannot reverse it. So it's great to start this way and if you want to change it to RGB later you can do that. And make sure your resolution is at least 300 uh, pixels per inch. Okay. Alright, so there's our blank white canvas. And over here in layers I want you to go down to this box here which is hover over it, create a new group. So you're going to do that, then you're going to go over to here, this little icon with the rectangle, that's add layer mask. Click that. Up here I want you to go to edit and fill. Mine's always on pattern because I do this so much, but you're going to go to pattern under contents and under here it's going to be custom pattern. Now if you haven't already done this, um, you will need to press this whirly gig here Go to Artist Surfaces and just press Append which will add this selection to your already existing um, surfaces. Okay, the one you're looking for is this, uh, it's the second to the last, if you hover over it, Gauche Light on Watercolour, that's basically like a thick watercolour paper, Press, click on that, press OK. Alright, and as you can see it made this box grey. Now what I want you to do is to go to your levels, so um, on a Mac that's Command L, Levels, and I want you to take this arrow right here and drag it into the middle of your graph. Press OK. What that does is it basically takes the texture down a little bit. If you leave the texture too strong, all you see is a texture and not your art. Now I want you to add a new layer. And so that is now in your group right here. And I want you to change it from normal to multiply. Great. Now let's go back to the drawing. And I'm going to go ahead and look. It's odd. I just wanted to grab it from him, but select him in any way you want to select your drawing. I just scan this into my computer. Command C for copy and command V to paste. Okay, there he is. And I think I'll make him a little bit bigger, so I'm going to command T, hold down the shift key and the option key so I can make him a little bit bigger and he won't change from being in the center. Okay. I'm just going to move mine a bit and press OK. Right, now I don't like this dirty white line, so I'm going to go to command L again, go to the white eyedropper tool, Click on anywhere that's uh, the paper and look at that. Gets rid of, oh, see how it's a bit darker here? Do it again. There we go. I don't like to be able to see the paper. Okay. I'm going to rename this drawing. Okay. Now I'm going to add another layer on top and also change it to multiply. And this I'm going to call color. So that if you did something you didn't like, you could always erase it. If you did it straight on the same layer, you'd erase your drawing as well. Okay, so um, what you can do now is you want to make sure that you have downloaded the brush that I'm going to give you a link to. It's my watercolour brush. 
I only ever use one brush for everything that I do. I even use it as my eraser brush. Um, and it's this brush here, as you can see, it's like a bunch of little dots, and that's a watercolor brush. Make sure that the mode is set to multiply. That will mean that when you color, let's give you an example real quick. You see it overlaps, adds more color on top. That's when you are putting in multiply. Okay, so there's that, so I'll get rid of that. Okay. Now, always start with your lightest colors first. Um, so I'm gonna do a bit of a yellow, light yellow. Bit here, and decide where your light's coming from. For me, it's gonna be right here. The sun would be here. So you want your warm colors to your left. Okay. And as you can see, when you're using this watercolor brush, you just layer on top, it adds color on top, just like a real watercolor painting. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna do a cool blue now on this white belly. I don't worry too much about going over the lines because I'm going to blend them together. You also do not have to blend at all. You don't have to use the blending brush. I just do it to make it a little smoother, but you don't have to. It's kind of cool having just these different looks just layering on top of each other. So it's totally up to you. Okay. So now what I'll show you is over here, if you hover over this, this is your smudge tool. This you can use instead of um, the blend tool that I showed you in my previous videos. So if you go up here, I like to make it a bit bigger. It's on 40 pixels right now. I'm gonna make it 79. And you can use that just to blend it. See, you don't have to get that other brush. Just blend the colors in together a little bit. Just love it, so cute. Okay. I'm going to go back to my colors. Start with an orangey kind of color. And as you can see, when I go over it, I haven't changed the color at all. But when I go over again, see that makes it a dark, another color. And then as you can see, I'm going from light to dark. So that's where the shadow would be, light to dark. I might make a bit more of a red. And as you can see, I kind of haphazardly sort of add color. <laughs> because then you can go back to your blending smudge tool and you can just smudge them all in together. And I don't worry about going over my pencil lines into the white area because when I'm done, I erase any bits that escaped or got over there. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep doing that now and I'll probably speed this video up so you can see what it's like when I'm done with the basic color. So now I've basically got the color inside where I like it. I'm going to start adding more finishing touches. Um, I like to outline 
my art uh, just to make it pop. It's also where I'm kind of obsessed with um, hair texture, so especially for animals. Um, so I'm going to zoom in a bit more now and just start methodically kind of going around. And I like to use a kind of grayish brown. And I always test it first. I keep my pencil still on the watercolor brush. I haven't changed it. I only ever use the same. Still at 100% um, opacity. It's very simple, but yeah, it gives you a really cool um, traditional look. So I like it a lot. And uh, so let's see. Yeah, that's a pretty good outline color, I think. So um, basically, when you're doing this bit, if this is, oh, it's a bit too dark. If this is uh, something that you do with your art, um, if you're zoomed in, make sure that every now and then you zoom out and make sure it's not too crazy looking. Uh, but also, when you're doing hair, here's a little tip for you. Um, follow the lines that the hair would grow. Uh, if you have animals at home, you know what I'm talking about. Um, the hair would kind of go up in this direction. The hair sticks out the ears like this. It's amazing how much the hair on the character actually gives it a lot of character itself. So, and just kind of whisk the area. All I'm doing really is going over my pencil marks, so you need to start with a good drawing. Now we'll go into the eye. Always work on the eyes at the same time. Don't keep going around. You need to finish the eyes first. Eyebrows. Mm -hmm. Let's give it a little less shine. Into the nose. And then into the lens. Okay, and I'm just going to keep doing that for a while and I'll speed up the video so it's not too long. So now that I've got the dark outline around little Mr. Fox here done, I am actually going to put in a few lines that are um, just going to add a bit more fur texture to him so it's not quite so bland looking. Um, and to do that I just colour pick out of um, the picture and dark red, dark orange, Maybe a bit of a darker, okay. And I'm just going to start adding lines. Zoom in a little bit. I've been doing this a bit lately because I just think it adds a little more interest to the picture. So I'll do this now with um, all the different kind of shades in this fox. I'll do a darker brown in the darker areas. And I'm just going to do it all over. I'll do it throughout his ears. 
just anywhere where I think it could do with a little, a little bit more of a pop to the picture. Okay, so I will speed this up so that um, I don't have to sit here watching me do it. Okay, so as you can see, I'm I'm done now, or for now, um, with uh, all my sketchy lines that have added lots of lovely fur to this little fox. And now my the finishing touches I do to a piece are I just clean up any colour that escaped and also um, any pencil lines that I want erased. So um, I'll start with the drawing. I went to uh, the drawing layer, and I'm just going to. Zoom in and just erase any little things I don't like. Um, it doesn't usually end up being very much because I'll show you what it looks like real quick without the drawing. See? Ah! The drawing just makes it much better. That doesn't mean he doesn't couldn't use a little cleanup. And remember, guys, this is just my style. Um, it's something that I've developed over the years, and it does not have to be yours. It's just something I'm sharing with you. Um, I think that as artists, it's great to explore other people's styles and the way that they do things, so that you can find what you like and what appeals to you, and then you kind of adapt it to be your own thing and it will never be the same as someone else's uh, so you don't have to worry about copying um, because it's there's really no way to unless you're a professional um, there's really no way to do it an exact copy of someone else's work and we're all learning we're all growing um, from each other and watching how each other produces work and and that's really why I'm doing this is um, I've had a lot of artists in my life help me with um, my art and I'm just sort of giving back in that way. So, plus it's fun. And nobody showed me how to do this in Photoshop. I am completely self-taught. I did not go to college for it and it's all just on my own merit. I got out there and I learned how to do it by myself. So, if I can do it, you can do it. Anybody can do it. Um, and really, it's just so fun and it's amazing what we can do. So now I'm in the color layer. I'm just going to clean up a few color areas here. And not too much because, you know, sometimes it looks kind of cool when there's a bit of color kind of going outside the lines, you know. <laughs> so, all right. Well, that's him. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. But basically, now you can use my technique without having to download the blend brush. You can just use this smudge tool right here. And I will do another video showing you how, when you use the smudge tool, if you change up here the brush type, that will completely change your, um, your blending as well. But uh, that'll be another day. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Have a wonderful day and get out there and start creating. Thanks. Bye.